Hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcat. So today I wanted to look at machining an axe handle using a fourth axis on a, a router. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, here's my part model. Uh, we can see there's some uh, some curvature to it and, um, you know, it's a typical axe type handle layout. All right. Now I've already set up my stock here. In this case, I also brought in uh, the tail stock. Um, you know, rotary chuck, I even uh, threw a table on here so we can get an idea of this layout. Now, for this video, I'm not going to cover uh, the machine definition. I should uh, go through and show how to build a machine like this with a, a fourth axis uh, because in this case, my rotary is running along X. A lot of times, they're running um, along Y uh, next to a table, but all of that can be configured in machine simulation. Really, it's not that hard to do, but not what I wanted to cover on this video, okay? So we got our parts set up here. Let me turn off some of my models and let's just get down into the stock. Um, when we look at our, our model here, we have our zero set up. We got our stock set up and, uh, you know, you can see our tool path is set up and it almost goes to the end there. And then it also uh, goes a little bit past the end here. So there's a couple of key things that I want to talk about. I want to talk about the, the feed plane and how that will affect your job, uh, the start and end to cut, and also direction of cut. So let's go ahead and get into this. Um, I'm going to select the model here and just copy and then create a new file and paste it in a new file. Okay, so one of the things you'll notice right off the bat is that the part is located on the x-axis. Uh, if I go to a right view here, you'll see that the center of the part is located on the x-axis, okay? So that's the first thing. Not necessary. You can adjust for that, but it's easier with your layout if you start there. All right, let me change the color of this. All right, sounds good. Now, let's go ahead and create a job, milling job. We're going to do a four-axis mill. We'll run our stock wizard here, cylindrical stock. Uh, this is going to run along the X. I'm going to add um, a diameter offset, and then I'm also going to add two inches on the front and two inches on the back. All right. From here, I'll set up my zero. Now, uh, a quick trick. Um, you know, in the past, I've talked about saving the file at this point and then opening it back up. Uh, what you can do as well is you can just grab this uh, stock geometry here, copy it, uh, continue on, and then, you know, go ahead and throw that on its own layer by pasting. So now you have your stock uh, geometry on its own layer and you didn't have to leave the software. So a nice little trick there. Let's go ahead and turn that off and get this back on. Now, let's, uh, let's load. Uh, I'm going to change this over. You can set up different materials. This one um, uh, is not set up correctly, but at least it says wood. <laughs> we'll have to go through that in another video. But, uh, okay, so we got this set up here. Let's go ahead and look at our tool paths. We're going to use the four-axis rotary. You need four-axis uh, standard in order to get this capability. Uh, it does cover indexing, wrapping, and rotary. This is the rotary tool path we're going to use here today. We'll select our geometry. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is just define my tool. And um, from here, I'm just going to compute the tool path. So I'm using the defaults. I've defined my tool, and I'm computing my tool path. Now, there's some things that we're going to want to look at. Uh, you know, uh, like I was talking about the start and end of the cut. Uh, this one's got a... I'm going to make some adjustments to my uh, default settings as well here. So... You know, where the tool starts cutting and where the tool ends cutting, you do have the ability to define that. You can give a value to tell it where to start cutting and to tell it where to end cutting. Okay. Uh, if you don't give it a value, it's just going to look at the geometry and base it off of that. But you need to be careful that you don't end up cutting through the part. All right. So here's the default tool path. And, um, you know, you see all this yellow tool path. These are rapids because it's set to single direction. So it's going to make a pass and then come back and make a pass and come back. Okay. So the other thing you'll notice is that it goes right to the end here. So it pretty much, um, if it doesn't cut it off, it would be very close to cutting it off. So this is one of the reasons why you want to adjust your uh, start and end to cut. So let's get back into the feature here. 
All right, uh, let's go to zigzag. So now we're gonna cut in two directions. The other thing is let's make this five degrees and let's uh, loosen up our tool path, all right? Now, when we do that, it's gonna calculate much quicker and we'll get some, some pass on the tool on, on the part really quickly. But again, you can see how we almost cut it off here. So how do we adjust where it starts cutting and where it ends cutting, okay? Well, where it starts cutting and end cutting is based off of an absolute value from your machine setup. So wherever your machine setup is, you know, you need to know the distance to where you want it to start cutting and the distance to where you want to end cutting. In this case, everything's a negative X for me, so I know that it's a negative X value for start and finish. All right, if you were in Y, then it, it could be positive Y. It just depends. Now, you it depends on your setup and your machine, but where you go is to the parameters tab on, under a long rotary axis, and you have start and end, okay? So in this case, if I wanted to start cutting at... Uh, you know, minus uh, one and three quarters, and this one's 31, I'm sorry, 30 and a half. It's gonna start cutting here, and then it's gonna end cutting there. So let's go ahead and recompute. All right, so now you can see the lead in and lead out is coming in from here. You can see that it starts cutting there. And then you can see that it ends, it, it's end cutting there. So, you know, I didn't have to draw any additional geometry. Sometimes I'll extrude a model to make sure that it doesn't cut through here. I'll, I'll extrude a cylinder or something, something that we can hold on to so we make sure that it doesn't cut free. Okay, so that's the, the, the first tip is about start and end and how you adjust it. Again, it's an absolute value from your machine setup. Now, in this case, I gave it a start at uh, minus one and three quarters and an end at uh, minus 30.5. But if I wanted it to start on this end, so it's gonna start over here and work this way. If I wanted it to start over here and work this way, what do you do? You just go in there and you adjust where your start is. So my start is minus 30.5 and my end is minus one and three quarters. Okay, so that's really easy to set up and we'll go ahead and compute that and now we can see that it's starting from the other side. All right, you can see your lead in this green line here. This is your lead in value. Let me, um, let me adjust this down a little bit. Okay, so let's get into uh, simulation. So I'm going to launch simulation so we can see what's going on here. All right, so I'm going to uh, step, see if I can step forward through this, because the first thing we're going to notice is um, we're going to notice that movement there, another movement, another movement. All right, let's play it through. Okay, so what you're going to see is, see this red? This is a plunge right into the workpiece, okay? So it came right down, and this initial move, you know, is important, especially if you're dealing with harder materials. Again, we're not really roughing here. We're just taking like a semi-finished pass. Uh, maybe we'll come back and sand it, or maybe we'll run a, a tighter step over. But this initial move, you want to make sure that, you know, you don't break your tool or don't snap off your workpiece. So how do you adjust that? So there's a there's a couple of things that we could do to adjust that, uh, that move there. Um, it may be, uh, you know, having a turn down blank, so you have clearance. It may be generating another tool path, like a, a wrapping tool path, just to open up that area. So when the when the tool is getting down into the to the workpiece, it's not doing so too aggressively. Uh, let me hide my tool path here and play this along. But you can see it actually does a really good job uh, running around the part and giving us the desired. Uh, result that we're looking for okay so so let's talk about this initial move here now what we're going to want to do is we're going to come back in here and this is actually your feed plane right now your feed plane is how far down into the cut the tool rapids before it starts feeding we have it set to a hundred thou so that means a hundred thou above the material or above the part geometry is where that's going to wrap it to. And that's that's where we're having this problem. So I'm going to go ahead and make the feed plane one inch and recompute our tool path. Now, what you're going to see is that there's a, uh, a, a dotted line. See how there's a dotted line? That's a rapid. And then there's this solid green line here. Okay. Let me, uh, let me change this to black for just a second. 
So this solid green line, that's your feed plane, okay? So I still actually am having it, if we uh, unblank our stock and we look at this from a front view, you know, you can still see that this solid line is down into the part. And what I want it to do is I, I don't want it to, I don't want it to wrap it down into there at all. Okay. I want it to feed down on that initial move. So, you know, the top of feature is this value here. You know, I can just match that value or, or greater, recompute this, and now I'm getting a feed coming in. So this way on that initial move, it's not running along. Now, when we look at this, we'll get into our tool. You know, so maybe we're cutting this at 20,000 RPM. You know, the cutting feed rate is maybe 120, but on that plunge, that initial move, maybe we want to drop that to 25, okay? So what that's going to do is it's going to feed at 25 inches a minute as it gets down into the part, and then it's going to come along at, at 120, all right? So let's go ahead and bring this back to white. All right. So we got our toolpath on the part. We have our stop and uh, stop, uh, our start and stop locations. We adjusted our initial move. Uh, we have it cutting back and forth. Uh, basically, we have everything set up the way that we want it to. And then uh, we can go ahead and run this through simulation. So this is a, a quick example of four axis uh, rotary toolpath where we're cutting a, a wooden handle. This one, again, is for a um, an axe. You can see it does a really good job. You would need a four-axis standard for this. Uh, with the four-axis standard, you also get indexing, wrapping, um, indexing and wrapping. This is the rotary tool path. We could run it around the part, but this is probably the most efficient way to handle this. Uh, if we wanted to rough it out, we could do a roughing cycle as well. But if you guys have any questions or uh, comments or feedback, please reply back to the Facebook, the YouTube, or whatever thread this video may be posted in. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much, guys.